Hey guys, it's Andrea. Welcome back. Hope everyone had a safe and happy new year and let's drive into it. So guys, you would have seen my video on the story time and my other one on qualifications to make a support worker. And I've also got some videos on what makes a good and bad support worker. But given that new year, a lot of people's plans might be rolling over but they might be looking at changing agencies, going to a private support worker. Let's dive into it. So a support worker or caregiver is someone who is paid to support and care for you in a capacity. In the NDIS, they're paid for either by an agency or through a private agreement. You can either ha go through an agency or a private worker. And there are pros and cons to both as well and so there are also limits to what a support worker can and can't do for you and that all then comes back to your plan your disability and or any co-siding co health conditions so in australia you it is suggested that you have your certificate three in individual support but you don't actually need any qualifications to be a direct support worker. It is an area of so much demand as well. And this is a video that I'm hoping to do, is going out and asking people what they think a support worker does. And one of my closest friends is a support worker. And as she says, well, it varies from day to day and with client to client. Sometimes it can be a friend, sometimes it can be a mentor, sometimes it can be a video editor, sometimes it can be a proofreader, sometimes it's a taxi driver, sometimes it's a chef, sometimes it's helping them with housework. And their roles, depending on the situation, whether that be community access, whether that be cell housing, whether that be another style of disability accommodation we need to be aware of. Um, sometimes you might need a support worker who's older than you, sometimes you might need a support worker who's in the same age bracket, but it all relates back to can they do what you need them to do on a consistent basis. One thing that I've found is due to staffing levels and COVID is that last year um, there were some events that happened and there was fault on both sides. I did not have a consistent care team and I did not realise until I've come out the other side how much impact that actually had on my mental health. And so this is one thing that you, if you're changing agencies, is will you have a consistent care team? Do you get handed a booklet of what you can and can't do with a support worker. Is it so is it in writing? Do you know what shift times? And if you need to adjust shift times, shorten them, lengthen them, have them after hours, um, have them go to events with you. And if you're public speaking, which a lot of people with a disability are starting to get into public speaking roles, starting YouTube, starting blogs. So is there any rules around that other than your country's privacy laws, other than your country's copyright laws, Google's copyright laws, Google's protection laws for minors? Are they all done, covered as well? Uh, that is something a support worker, if you have internet, can help you research. Um, so, and then a support worker can also help you with activities of day-to-day -day living so that can be dressing, that can be bathing, that could be meal prep, that could be wow. in the long term taking it with a dietitian, helping you with groceries, helping you maintain a budget, helping you to maintain a house. And notice that I'm saying helping, not doing it for you. You need to be able to do what you can for yourself because there's a rule in support about active support and that's being active in the person's life but helping them to be an active participant in their own life 
not sitting back and doing all of the work for them. This gets into what they call learnt dependency and it can really affect someone's mental health when they are used to having things done for them but then it comes as a rude shock that they have to do it for themselves because they've changed agencies, they've changed homes, they've changed disability accommodation. Not saying that there's not any exceptions to the rule, but if you're a higher functioning person, there will be the expectation that you do contribute to the household as well. As, and oftentimes you would be might be looking for a day service or going back to a day service so looking at what skills development do, do they offer so if you do art and crafts are you allowed to sell them do you give them away as gifts do they have a facebook page where they have featured artists these are all things that a support worker can help you with guys so just to recap a good support worker is able to work with you within your goals work within your limitations and not belittle your limitations and not railroad you into doing things that you don't want to do that you're uncomfortable doing or you're unable to do just because they assume that you can do them then understanding your family dynamic is a really big one understanding your goals if you want to get back into work is it realistic for you to work in a mainstream environment or is it better for you to go the entrepreneur route and start a micro business is it possible and safe for you to record in a still house um, they might be quite open to that and use that as marketing and I have sponsorships things like that then also looking at if you're going through an agency, guys, I really need to have a drink. So, if you're going through an agency, what is the agency's office staff like? What is their office culture? Are you treated like a cash cow or are you treated as a human? So, that's a really big one. If you're treated like a cash cow, you're going to have a revolving door of support workers. You're not going to know who's on. If there's because if there's an absolute family emergency you don't want to have to train someone up last minute on your needs and so having a consistent care team and a backup of a few people who know you but don't is necessary so being and understanding that your limits that you might present as high functioning but knowing where your lacks are, knowing and having a relationship with your informal support. I know I've talked about this one in the past, but having a relationship with your informal supports is actually really important because that then allows them to get accurate information on you. What your self-assessment of your needs might not be accurate it might be that you're much more high functioning than you think you are or it might be that there's more deficits that you're not aware of and for mental health reasons have been kept for you so, and also they support workers in a very weird way become a part of the family and so they will be doing things that a partner or a parent could be doing for a child. Bathing, dressing, cooking, cleaning are all things of running a household that a support worker would do for someone with a disability or if it's a child with a disability do to help the family. So you see where having a right fit and choosing a good support worker is a little more complex than just picking an agency you need to make sure that the agency or the support worker is the right fit for you, they've got the right policies and the right skills. So they might be the best support worker for someone who is right into arts and crafts, can help them set up a micro business. 
but for someone who's into technology, watches a lot of YouTube, wants to blog about that, you're going to need someone with editing skills, high level English. You're going to need someone who can keep that person on track, who can script, who has an idea about copyright or how to edit videos, might be interested in or run their own YouTube channel themselves on the side. So guys, um, this video, I hope it really does help and there are some videos in the works um, that I've been promising for I think two years now on restrictive practices and my health journey. I've just had to figure out a few things in background to be able to do these effectively. And guys, please like, share and subscribe and I hope you have a happy and safe new year.